Hello friends, I am Dr. Sarthak, Critical Cardiac Care in Charge in Narana Health uh, City, Narana Hudalaya, Bangalore. And uh, today we are going to discuss a very important topic, coronary artery disease and various symptom significances uh, of the uh, disease, what it can cause. To discuss this along with me is a very eminent senior consultant in uh, cardiology, Dr. Praveen P. Sadarman. And he is also working here at Narana Health City, Narana Hrudalya, Bangalore. So what is coronary artery disease? Coronary artery disease is a, a, a very, very important topic that we are discussing today. The main intention of this talk is to spread awareness so that people are aware of what to look out for, what are the signs and what are the symptoms that uh, you know, a layman should be aware, aware of. of. So cardiovascular disease, you know, it's a, a very, very important topic that probably we'll discuss further as we further. go along. Yeah. So that is the main intention of this talk today. So what exactly is the is coronary artery disease? Why does it matter so much? What uh, what is it uh, that we are worried about? Sure, as everyone knows, heart is the major pumping organ. So the basic function of the heart is to pump blood. Right. Like any other organ, heart needs energy as well to function. So the the tubes or the blood vessels that supply uh, blood and energy along with it is called the coronary arteries. When there is a blockage causing a in a functional reduction of blood supply. Uh, that is when we say there is a problem with the blood supply. So the pumping efficiency can go down. So this is what coronary artery disease is all about. Okay, so basically it's the blood vessels uh, which are supplying to the musculature of the heart itself that you are discussing. Yes, that is very important as you know. Yeah. And why does it matter as you said? Uh, cardiovascular disease in general as you know, we all know it is the number one killer in the world. Uh, right, in terms absolutely. Of uh, the developed world, uh, it is the number one cause of mortality. Uh, however, even in the developing world, we are fast catching up. India has become yeah. the heart disease capital of the world. It has become the diabetic capital of the world. It has become the hypertensive capital of the world. So we've got to do this distinction of all these three titles, catching which up we didn't them. want to. So, but that's the reality. So yes. the reason why it is so important is it is estimated that about every 40 seconds, coronary artery disease kills someone. So that's you know, a big it number. A, it's a very big number. And also it, it matters because not only does it affect you as a kind of, for example, the patient, it affects other people as what we call about mortality and morbidity. Mortality yes. is obviously the patient yes. will die. Morbidity is the patient will have to go through the symptoms, you know, a bit of heart failure, not being well. And that has a huge impact on all the other people surrounding them. For yeah. example, family members, it has got a social impact. It has got an economic impact. True, true. So, and once again, they also estimate that throughout the world, every one out of six dollars uh, that is being spent on health is spent on cardiovascular disease. My God, so that's, that's like a huge number, trillions huge, of dollars. Trillions of dollars, absolutely. And India is fast catching up, you know. The number of people who are insured is very, very minimal. Very minimal. And, very minimal. Uh, obviously, the, there are the government uh, facilities that is being built up, but once again, that is nowhere near what it should be. What so it, there's a yeah, huge it, burden on true. family as well. Not only on the patient, there's a huge burden on the family. It's not really possible to to have that much of, uh, of government or any facility. It's Correct. just too huge a number. Correct. So insurance is catching up in India. But once again, that's only a very, very small, uh, small number. concentrated in a few major cities like metros. Uh, but if you go much deeper, or even in the metros, a lot of people still don't have insurance. Don't have. So don't that have. is someone, a patient in the family or one family member becomes affected with coronary artery disease. That is a huge burden. Yes. So on yes. all sorts of burden, like in economic, financial, uh, social, social, looking after people. So, for True. example, if someone else has to give up their work to look after another family member, yes. that has got, that's like a double whammy. So, the person yeah. who is already earning, we have lost that member. The person who is looking who was also earning and now they are looking after that family member, they are lost their earnings as well. So and whatever is being earned is also going yeah. into the Correct. medicines and uh, the Correct. care. So True. that is why it matters a lot. It does, it does. And uh, so would it not be more prudent to prevent this whole problem rather than allowing it to happen and then trying to take care of it? Correct. That's a, a very good question. See, uh, that's probably the, the elixir of the, of the world. So, you know, 
everyone wants to live healthy yes something what in general is misunderstood the concept between health and disease see health is preventing a disease once disease is already set in once for example if someone has been diagnosed with a problem it is already too late there's a damage is already happened Done. then it is only damage control trying to patch up things rather than making it new yes. so the concept of health is very 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 important because people understand you know once they become unwell they go they go to the doctor or the hospital and they they think that okay fine you know, we come out and we have to completely normal but when that may not be the case yes true so it's only symptom control rather than coming back to normal health so it is very very important that preventive health what is yes, preventive yes. health there is you know it's it has to be given more emphasis now not only in the hospitals but throughout you know the society in general so that people start living a healthier life to prevent any disease yes so that's that seems to be the key moving forward moving forward yeah prevention is always better than a cure or a, or even a control we can't yeah. cure it yeah. we have we just try to control it as best as we yeah. can that is true. so so uh, how uh, would you suggest we we prevent a, a coronary artery disease from really manifesting in a person what is to be done or what is not to be done sure so it depends on the the risk factors we we traditionally talk about risk factors being associated with heart disease true i think most people are aware of all these risk factors like traditional risk factors like diabetes if you are diabetic your risk of having heart disease increases they also that say that you know you are three times more likely to die of a heart disease if you have diabetes yeah so that, you know that diabetes is a very significant factor so controlling your diabetes or not getting it in the first place is the most important thing yes second looking at Uh, hypertension or high blood pressure once again that is also very very important to control the longer you have the poorly controlled uh, hypertension you know, chances of having heart disease is much higher yes and once again the third point would be smoking so everyone knows not to smoke but unfortunately what's happening is the older generation who had already smoked for years they've all given up now or at least trying to give up it is a new younger generation who is kind of you know in the in their teens and especially girls uh, who are already picking up smoking so that is something that we need to be aware because we are seems to be we seem to be catching up with the west yes. that is what's happening you know in the west the older people are all stop smoking but however you know the younger generation including girls they are taking up smoking and, and it's is, more dangerous for girls absolutely they the some, risks are much more much 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 higher compared to boys i'm not saying it's good for boys definitely smoking is bad there's no doubt about it but once again there is a difference between how smoking affects girls as well as boys so that difference is also quite important the same thing with alcohol as well yeah. how it affects man and woman is entirely different once again you know alcohol seems to become a fashion now everyone wants to take up drinking and once see the difference between here and the west in general people tend to drink socially but here people tend to drink sometimes alone or something most of them is like you know hard spirits mm. whiskey rum which has got a very high alcohol content like mm. 50 55% mm. people drink socially there you know it could be wine or beer which is got 7% 10% alcohol no alcohol is good for health that's something i want to make it very clear but yes uh, this is a difference. question a lot of people ask uh, you know so uh, xyz wine or this color wine is supposedly good for the heart Correct. doctor what do you suggest so Correct. this question okay. keeps on coming time and again all the studies have shown that no alcohol is good for absolutely the health. but once again you know i'm not here to prescribe to people what their lifestyle should be it is entirely up to people to decide what they do but once again they should have all the facts and information that that's the main intention before you make your choice true Correct. true so true and uh, so coming to the next next question what are the signs you watch out for in a page person or what is what are the signs a person uh, should watch out for which can uh, lead them to suspect coronary artery disease okay that that is a, that is a very 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 important question because most people uh, i think the common thing that we hear as doctors especially as cardiologists is you know i thought it is a gastric trouble i think that is the yeah. one sentence i've heard throughout my life numerous times yes that's the most common thing people confuse 50% for. of our triage is full of patients Correct. with heart attack saying Correct. they they came thinking it's a you know, gastritis and that is where time is lost yes. okay so the most common symptom any cardiac patient will have is chest pain 
So once, you know, it could be chest pain can come in very different varieties. You know, not all pain is significant. I'm not asking people to panic if they have chest pain. Hmm. But to to be aware in their mind that this could be a possibility, if especially if they have other risk factors. So chest pain, you know, typically is described as either central or going onto the left side and then kind of uh, radiating to the left shoulder. That is a typical scenario. Hmm. But most of the time, you don't have that. Okay, hmm. any chest pain can be significant. Sometimes it can go to the jaw, it can go to the back. Uh, and then it can just manifest as very vague epigastric pain as well pain. and that is when people tend to mistake it as a gastric pain. Yes. So all of these, these things can be quite important. If you have doubt, please see the doctor, get an ECG done or a blood test and it's very very simple. Most of the yes. labs these days, there are multiple labs everywhere. You, know, yes. you just walk five minutes from your house, I'm sure they will find a lab. Yes. So I'm all of these labs sure. will be able to, they're all equipped to do an ECG and a troponin blood test, which is a marker of whether there's been a heart attack or not. So True. very, very simple to do. If there is doubt, rather than ignoring and waiting, for example, it could be a Sunday and then the most, that's one of the other things I very commonly hear. Yes. Doctor, it was a Sunday. That's the reason I didn't go out. But all the labs are all open today. Yes. Okay? So you call them, someone will come and take the blood as well. So. Yeah, so facilities are available today. Please make use of that. So being aware is one of the most important things. So make sure that you are aware. For example, any chest pain, if you think it is significant, please take it seriously. The second thing that you need to be aware of is breathlessness. For example, an unusual breathlessness. Everyone will get breathless if you walk to flight of stairs. For example, if you go onto the third floor and you start feeling breathless, that's probably not that significant. Not that significant. But if you're not able to walk a few steps or you stop, you know, you are walking on the flat and you start feeling panting or you're feeling breathless, yes. that is something to be worried about. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Other things would be, you know, you get dizzy spells, you know, or sudden you know, transient loss of consciousness Const where you think, okay, suddenly you felt very faint or unusual sweating. Yes. And one thing that is a very common thing I get asked about. People tend to sweat and some people has got a tendency to sweat more compared to someone else. But all sweating is not significant. Hmm. You know, for example, if you're working out and you sweat, that is something natural. Natural. If, if you get sweating even without working, if you're just sitting and you start, you know, you're feeling unwell and sweating. So that is very, very important. Yes. So if you feel complete level, if you're sweating, if you're walking around, that's probably not significant. But was if you're working, if you're sitting, doing nothing and you start sweating, if you start feeling unwell, that is something not to be ignored. Why should you sweat and get tired Correct. without any reason? Absolutely. So that is another symptom that you need to worry about. Uh, other than that, palpitations, you know, you feel a bit faint headed. So these are all not that common, but these are the ones which what I told you now are the most common things common, that you need to things. look out for. True, true. Great. So, uh, yeah, uh, coming to the risk factors as we uh, disc uh, discussed a little uh, short while ago, what are the preventable actions that can be done to prevent a coronary artery disease? So the risk factors are contained with that. In that, there are a few things that, uh, what do you consider as unhealthy food? That's the one point that I would like to discuss. See, uh, I think let's talk about food as such in general. I'm not going to go very deep into what food you should be, once, once again, it's prescribed. I'm not prescribing food to anyone. Yeah. But the general principle should be that Eat only when you are hungry. Okay? okay. There's no point of having multiple meals. Even if you're having multiple meals, make sure it is restricted. Either you reduce the calorie content hmm. or you eat only when you are hungry. Sometimes it is not possible. For example, for example, all of us have a routine. So if you if you have a routine of a morning breakfast, a lunch, and a dinner, if you are hungry, eat well. If you're not hungry, eat less. Yes. So that is going to be very important. Restrict your calorie intake. Absolutely. And what type of food you eat, once again, very, very important. There is a good balanced diet, okay? So, lot of fruits, vegetables, uh, pulses. Once again, a common question I got, uh, get asked about is, is rice good for health? Rice itself is good, but once again, it's about the quantity. Quantity, yes. If you're eating too much rice, it's not good. If you're eating too much of polished rice, once again, it's not, not good. Not good. But there has to be a mix of everything. So. True. It's not like rice is bad or, you know, wheat is bad, chapati is bad. You know, chapati is, you know, people eat chapati. But if someone, if they don't eat chapati and then you force them to eat chapati, 
<laughs> it will never work out. It will not work out. So them. let them have a balanced diet. That is going to be more important rather than uh, you know not having a balanced diet. Yeah. Once again, if you're eating a lot of fried food, you know that is huh. not good. You know you can have a cheat day or a kind of you know an enjoyment day once a once in a while. So like you know once a, once in fifteen days or once a week, that is fine. If you're healthy, that should not be work. As long as you're able to digest everything, as long as you're able to spend those calories. It will not actually matter that much. That Obviously, much. you have to have your moderation because moderation is the key. As long as you're able to spend your calories, so that is very very important. Hmm. If you're not able to spend your calories, even if you eat very small amount, it's going to be a surplus for day by day. See, every day you're going to accumulate those extra calories. So you, hmm. because spending is so important. Yes. Because people sometimes get so fixated on the food, they don't understand that. Okay, fine, having a good food is okay. Restricting your food is okay, but you cannot restrict it hundred percent. And this is particularly common in our Indian community, pan India. Correct. We are fixated on food. Correct. <laughs> food is okay, but you know, as long you can eat as much as possible, but you should be able to spend, spend it. Spend it. If you are not spending it, whatever you eat is extra. Extra. True. True. That's an important point that we need to discuss, understand. Eat healthy, eat a variety of food, and eat what you can actually spend or digest. Don't just you know eat for the sake of eating. Correct. So I think uh, that's uh, we are done, and we had a very interesting talk, and we got to understand, learn so many things. What is to be done when you have some symptoms, and how do you really understand whether you have a coronary artery disease? Particularly if you have any kind of pain, as Sir said, uh, not a reason to panic, but at the same time, get an ECG done. Show to a doctor if you are having a chest pain. Get uh, just show to a doctor. Get an ECG done. That's important, and we are always there to help you uh, at our center. Anybody uh, can come in at any point of the time, day or night, 24 by 7, we are open. And just to add the final point, there's a lot of information on the internet. There's also yes. a lot of information on our own Narayana Health website. Yes. One thing I would want to advise people is get the information from the right place. That's okay. There's a lot of misinformation in addition to information. So make sure that you get the right information. And once again, as I said, we are always there. So I'm very happy to talk to you. But most of the time now, people are able to contact us by video consultations. One yes. thing that has changed since the pandemic is that, you know, government has allowed us to do video, video consultation, consultation, which we are able to reach a larger mass uh, sitting in your own place. For example, if you all you need is a phone. <laughs> all you so, need is a phone. And, True. Uh, that has definitely revolutionized the treatment uh, of you know care of people, I would care say care treatment, treatment, but definitely the care that we provide is definitely revolutionized it. So True. people can make use of that and obviously speak to your uh, healthcare professional and make sure if you are in doubt, please get it checked. That's going to be the key message.